Hello everyone, how are you all? I hope you're all well. Today we have a quiz for you. It should come up on the screen in a minute so you can pause it and do the questions and then start it and let it play on a bit and you'll get the answers. You have to decide if the statement is true or if it's false. So here they are. So how did you do with the quiz? How many did you get right? True or false? Mm. How did you decide what was right? What fact to believe as true and which not to believe because you thought it was false? How did you decide? There are lots of different ways to do this, aren't there? Sometimes we've learned it at school. Sometimes we just know, but we're not sure how we know. Um, and sometimes we've looked it up on Google. So what does it mean to believe something? It means that you know that it's real. Even if you haven't seen it, you know that it's real or something's true, something's really happened. Um, so even if you haven't been to France or America or Germany, you believe that they're there because there's evidence for it. So um, sometimes it's because somebody's told you and you trust that person. So in the next couple of, of weeks, over the next couple of sessions, we're going to think about believing something is true. And we're going to think about why we believe it's true and about evidence. Sometimes we want to believe something but we're worried that it might not be true and we might be believing something that's not true and that's how it was with Thomas and we're going to hear about Thomas today and how he felt. So let's just see this little clip. Well, it doesn't happen, does it? Except in ghost stories around the campfire when you, if you go in for that sort of thing. Oh, I'd better introduce myself, I suppose. I'm Thomas the Twin. That's me. I'm one of the Messiah's 12 closest followers. By the way, don't ask about my twin. We don't talk about him. Anyway, where was I? Ghost stories around the campfire. Yeah, oh yeah, all right. Rising from the dead, that's what it was. Rising from the dead. I mean, it just doesn't happen, does it? That's what I thought one day, until shortly after Passover a few years ago. Let me tell you how I completely changed my mind on that score. And I can tell you I'm as hard as anyone to, to persuade as the next man. Some people even call me the doubter. You'll certainly have heard about the trial and crucifixion of Jesus of Nazareth. Well, I was there in Jerusalem when it happened. Oh, horrible it was. What a way to die. The agony, the stench, the angry shouts of the people. Those Romans, they're butchers. After Jesus had been crucified, I decided to make myself scarce. Very vindictive those religious leaders can be. And I figured with Jesus dead, they'd be gunning for Jesus' happy band of followers next. So mid-afternoon on the Friday, just after the butchers had stuck a spear into Jesus' side, blood pouring out, the works, oh, he was very dead. I got out of Jerusalem 
I went to stay with my pal Lazarus in, uh, Lazarus in uh, Bethany, a couple of miles away. Well, Saturday is our Sabbath day. We rested, not allowed to work really. We rested talking loads about the trial of Jesus, his execution. And then on the Sunday, day, to take our minds off it, we set about fixing Lazarus's plough, which was broken. And we soon found it needed a piece of iron bar that, uh, to do it properly. He didn't have any of the right size. So I decided to nip back into Jerusalem, heavily covered, so I wouldn't be recognised. Uh, while I was getting what I needed at old Eli Berry's store, I heard a few strange whispers about the aftermath of cr Friday's crucifixion. I couldn't catch what exactly. So in a fit of madness, I went to the room over Glo Glover's Bakery, where I guessed the rest of Jesus' followers would be. That's where they normally met. And I was wondering if they were as absolutely devastated as me and Lazarus were. Imagine my surprise when I found a bit of a party mood around. A lot of amazings, can't believe it, and hallelujahs filling the room. Someone said, hey Thomas, guess what? We've seen the Lord. What, says I? Yeah, Jesus was here, right in this room. No, I said, not a chance. He was dead all right, I saw what they did to him. We did see him, they said. Sure as you, we see you standing there. No, no, it's your minds making it up. You saw a ghost. He was as real as you are, they said. More real somehow. And you know what? In that way he does, he blessed us. And in that way he does, gave us some work to do. Well, I could see there was no shift in them. So I said to them, Seeing's believing. For me to believe, I would have to see for, for myself. No, I would need to poke my finger where the nails were. And just to be doubly sure, I'd put my hand into the wound on his side. It was that big. With that, I left them and went back to Bethany. Well, a week later, we met in the same room. Delicious smells coming up from the bakery below. Suddenly, he was there with us through a locked door but definitely there. Shalom, he says, reaching for the bread on the table. And then, turning to me, he says, Oh, Thomas, you wanted to see. The hands? The side, stick your hand in here. Now then, if seeing is believing, it's time to stop doubting and believe. With that, I was overwhelmed. My Lord and my God was all I could say. But he wasn't done. Thomas, you have believed because you've seen. Imagine the happiness of those who believe without seeing. I can tell you that meet, that meeting with the risen Jesus changed my life in ways that I could not imagine and took me to places I barely knew existed, but that's another story. Well, that was good, wasn't it? Colin's really good at acting and he made us think about how Thomas felt. Okay, well, that's it for part one this week. There's another clip coming on and we've got Joe talking to us from level two on that one with his dad. Um, so you can finish this one now. Go and have a drink, have a think, and then watch the other one. Okay, bye.